you, everyone. Um, so I am very excited to be here, and I must say that today very much lived up to its um, name. I have walked away inspired, and that's not a small feat for someone who works around the world with companies on, you know, on developing new technologies and new business models. Today, I wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of the company's perspective because uh, as the Global Compact, we work with companies. We're the UN arm that uh, works with companies to in engage them in responsible business practices aligned to universal principles in the areas of human rights, anti-corruption, environment, and labor. And for the last uh, three years almost, I have been leading our work on breakthrough innovation. And that looks at how companies come together with other stakeholders to evaluate disruptive technologies and new business models and build solutions that express their contributions to the SDGs. So what I wanted to share with you is a little bit about what companies are doing and how we're thinking about the SDGs broadly. So one thing you will learn about me very quickly is that even though I run a disruptive technology program, I am prone to a lot of technical difficulties. So, <laughs> so, um, so from our perspective, the SDGs really, if we're looking at uh, you know, corporate actions to advance the SDGs, you know, we like to talk to them about SDGs are not a CSR, a corporate social responsibility agenda. They are um, the our most comprehensive articulation of human needs in the world, and thus they are your roadmap to creating long-term sustainable value for your company, for your shareholders and stakeholders alike. So what we try to do is nudge companies to move out of this CSR space because as many speakers mentioned today, business as usual is not going to get us to the SDGs. So I share with you some research here that's been done by the Business and Sustainable Development Commission, uh, their report, Better Business, Better World, which I highly recommend reading, it was launched in 2016. And they've done extensive research on the sustainable development goals and what are some of the market opportunities that are uh, aligned to the uh, sustainable development goals. And so they found that if the SDGs were achieved by 2030, it would unlock $12 trillion annually in market opportunities in four economic systems, uh, food and agriculture, cities, energy and materials, health and well-being. So when we look at where these opportunities stack up, and they've also found that in creating, in achieving the SDGs, by 2030, that will also generate 380 million jobs globally. And if you look at the map, a lot of the jobs and opportunities are concentrated in areas where in 2030, they will be aligned with some of the largest economies in the world. So just to drive home the point for companies that this is not just a, a do-good agenda, you are, by participating in creating a more prosperous, a peaceful world on a healthy planet, you are not only contributing to the greater good of the world, but also you're potentially securing your place in creating long-term value. Really important because as we learned um, from Nicholas early this morning, uh, the lifespan of many companies is um, shrinking. So I think a publicly traded company can expect to be in existence now in 12 years only as opposed to in the 60s, 40 years. So once again, we're, we're saying that this is your roadmap for long-term sustainable value. But that said, the, the sustainable development goals are an exponential agenda. And why do I say that? Because we, when we look at many of the goals, whether it's goal one, no poverty, or goal two, um, no hunger, that requires the transformation of the state of billions of people around the world in short order. We have 12 years to get to um, you know, the state of almost four billion people in uh, poverty or no hunger down to zero. So the global goals are uh, an exponential agenda, and for an exponential agenda to be achieved, we need really bold solutions. 
So that's, our, um, that's part of our, our overarching narrative, where companies can play a role, a strong role, in um, you know, creating this world of shared prosperity, a thriving environment, and peace, but they can't do it with business as usual. They really need to uh, raise their sustainability ambitions, as all of us do. We need to raise our ambitions in what we seek to achieve. So when I say what does um, raise ambitions mean for companies, that's where our work on breakthrough innovation comes in. So for companies to contribute to achieving that exponential agenda that the SDGs present, they have to reframe their conceptions of what's possible and engage in what we call breakthrough innovation. So breakthrough innovation for companies are aligned to three pillars. One is embracing new mindsets. So it's really thinking about how do you make things 10 times better as opposed to 10% better. Um, how do you love the, as the problem, not the solution? So I think that also ties into some of the discussion we had at lunch in applying a gender lens to um, your innovation. Rather than going into a community or going to a group of people with a pre-made solution, loving the problem so much so that you're immersed in the challenges, immersed in the opportunities, and you're co-creating with the end user of the, of the solution. So then we look at um, designing and testing new business models. Because in doing so, that accelerates the accessibility of the solution. And so we've done a lot of research on some of the um, key business model uh, elements that are underpinning some of the uh, disruptive technologies today. And then naturally, it's deploying disruptive technology. So taken together, this is the way that companies can accelerate their, um, their sustainability ambitions as well as um, accelerate their contribu contributions to the sustainable development goals. So I wanted to share some examples with you of how companies are heeding that call of raised ambitions. So um, we've worked, the Global Compact works with 9,000 companies around the world in 160 countries. And what we're seeing is that, first of all, this revolution in terms of um, raised ambitions, accelerating progress on the sustainable development goals through uh, the application of disruptive technology and new business models are entirely being led by startups. So many of the startups that you have engaged, in, engaged with in the room are leading that, that charge. And they are the catalyst for inspiration and, and raising the bar for what's possible for companies. So I introduce one startup with you, uh, to you rather, called Kimetrica that's working directly on SDG3 and is using artificial intelligence um, embedded in mobile phone applications to diagnose malnutrition in young children. And so, um, you know, this is a huge challenge and one of the things that is so striking about their work and it leads to a broader trend that's happening is this notion of AI in the streets. So, AI not in a lab, but AI in your phone that, you know, um, helps to, to um, solve some really pernicious challenges. And so this company is um, using AI to help uh, medical professionals identify and triage really acute cases of malnutrition in remote underserved communities. And so um, the next company is a global compact company and um, they had a, a really ambitious goal of addressing the challenge of um, the lack of affordable cl and clean energy around the world with the aim of addressing that group of about 20 million around the world that have no access to clean and affordable energy. And what they've done is paired um, you know, data, IoT, Internet of Things rather, big data, uh, with battery storage technology and have built a mini grid and have started to deploy it in um, rural parts of Colombia to generate clean energy and, and pair it with a business model, a usage-based usage, usage -based pricing model to make the access to energy much more affordable. 
So when we talk about um, disruptive technologies, there aren't anything without the business models to expand the access. And then finally, um, see, once again, I, the, the technical difficulties always follow me because <laughs> I was sure my slides were formatted really well. Um, but that said, uh, another company based in Portugal, an engineering firm that focuses on autonomous mobility, is looking at a blockchain-based blockchain -based low carbon mobility system. So globally, around 15% of greenhouse gas emissions come from uh, transport systems. So what they're doing is basically um, uh, developing a blockchain-based block, blockchain -based token called the Air Credit to promote the use of low carbon transport systems. Um, so riders that use the system actually get credits uh, for the CO2 that they have uh, avoided, effectively putting a price on carbon. And if uh, anyone has read one of the, the IPCC report that has come out, um, one of the solutions that is really going to help us accelerate uh, progress on combat combating climate change is carbon pricing. So. I wanted to share those examples with you to um, really inspire and to say that um, all of us in this room, whether we're companies or organizations or um, city or representatives of policymakers, have a few things to do. And one of them, one thing is that is to collectively raise our ambitions as to what is possible. So not um, letting today's constraints limit future solutions. And I want to leave you with just a few um, calls to actions and a summary. So as I mentioned, the SDGs are the roadmap for the world's needs and they give all of us an unprecedented opportunity to support the creation of a world with shared prosperity, peace, and to reverse environmental degradation. Um, they're also an exponential agenda, so that said, uh, exponential challenges require bold solutions um, and you know these solutions can be high-tech or low-tech the idea is that um, we as I mentioned we need to raise our ambitions um, and then finally where many companies especially startups are heeding the call um, deploying new business models disruptive technologies and solutions that really uh, are going to progress the SDGs so when in developing the solutions, I like to um, tell companies to look at this AP squared model, which is make your, you know, be anticipatory. Use the SDGs as the problem statements that you will uh, solve for. Make your, the development of your solutions participatory. Um, and in showing that you're including the, the end users or the people who will be most impacted by the solutions. And then finally, be principled in your approach to development. Look at how your um, solutions impact or impinge on human rights, on anti-corruption efforts, environment and labor, and seek to minimize those impacts while maximizing the positive ones. So thank you so much for this opportunity to speak today, and I look forward to um, the innovation revolution for the SDGs continuing.